Hi everyone and welcome back or welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to show you three crochet Christmas present ideas. All of these projects are super beginner friendly because they're worked up in the same stitch, which is lemon peel stitch, and are just variations of rectangles. So if you're able to crochet a rectangle, you're able to make any of these projects. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work lemon peel stitch, and then I'll show you how to work each individual project. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and if you have any questions as you work through it, please leave a comment down below. To work lemon peel stitch, you're going to place a slip knot onto your hook. You're then going to chain an even multiple, so anything divisible by two. And for the purposes of just this instructional bit, I'm going to chain 10. And that'll give us rows that have 10 stitches. Okay. To begin, I'm going to chain two more, and this will act as the chain three for our first double crochet. So I'm going to skip the first three, so one, two, three, and then place a single crochet into the fourth chain from my hook. That's kind of the oddest bit, and you won't repeat that step per se, but once we finish this row, I'll show you the row that'll be the repeat row for the entire work. And then the rest of the way, you're just going to alternate double crochets and single crochets. So I was just going to warn against this and I just did it. So to know that you've more than likely completed your row correctly, you should end on a single crochet. But as you can see here, I have a double crochet, which would, I have two stitches left and be on a double crochet. And so I'm just taking a peek at my work and I accidentally did two single crochets in a row. So I'm just gonna pull those out and work the rest of my pattern. But that is important to note because sometimes whenever you're doing the base row, it's easy to just get going and you miss, you know, the stitch you're supposed to do. So just be extra cautious on the very first row because the rest of the rows, you'll know if you're doing the right stitch because you'll be stitching it into the opposite. So you'll only work single crochets into double crochets and double crochets into single crochets, but I'll sh that'll make more sense once we get into the second row. So I'm ending on a single crochet, and that's my very first row. So now the next row I'm going to do is going to be the repeat row for every single row until you get the desired length of your piece. So I'm going to chain three, and that acts as our first double crochet. I'm going to turn my work, skip the single crochet from the previous row, right under the chain three, and work a single crochet into the next double crochet. And then you'll just repeat double crochet, single crochet, all the way across. And as you can see here, I have a single crochet from the previous row, and that's what I'm working my double crochet into. And that's kind of how the pattern works, and that's how it squishes out the double crochet, because, I, I mean, I don't know the, ex the exact reason, but I think what it does is the single crochets pull the double crochets down, um, and then that's what gives the textural effect. Okay, so now I'm on my last stitch because I'm ending on a single crochet. And what I'm gonna do is place one single crochet into the third chain of the chain three. So I'm just going to find the third chain and work my stitch into it and work a single crochet. 
And so that's how you'll repeat every single row. It's just a chain three and then it alternates single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. So now that we have the basis down for the video, let's get into the projects. To work the headband, we're going to place a slip stitch on our hook. We're then going to chain eight. I'm then going to chain two more and then work my lemon peel stitch across. Okay, I'm then going to work lemon peel stitch until I have 28 total rows. So including this first row, I'm gonna work until I have 28 rows. Okay, I used a different yarn for this actual headband, but this is the result after 28 rows. The total dimensions, and I'll list this clearly in the video as well, it's going to be about four and a half inches by 18 to 18 and a half inches for the smaller headband size. If you're making it for someone with a bigger head, um, go 4.5 by 20 to 20.5 because I'm assuming a two inch stretch. And I actually tried this on myself. I completed it and tried it on. It was pretty comfortable. And I have about a 22 inch head. So a couple of my stitches came out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rework those. Okay, so now the next step and final step is to connect the two ends of our work. And so what I'm gonna do to do this, and I'll preface by saying there are so many different ways that you can join two ends of a crochet piece. Um, you can sew, you can crochet it together, and basically those are the two, but there's different variations within those. I'm going to single crochet these sides together, and that's actually also how I'll connect the infinity scarf as well, but it's just my preferred method because I hate sewing by hand. So what we're going to do is chain one, we're going to flip our work, and then we're going to fold our work so both sides of the beginning and end are laying pretty much on top of each other. And what we're gonna do now is single crochet through the first loop on, or first stitch on the front and back and complete the single crochet. So let me, so I'm going to work into the first stitch on the front, pick up the back, and the first loop here will actually be the first chain of the chain three of the first double crochet. So I'm going to find that Now I'm through both and I'm going to finish my single crochet. Okay, on to the next. So the second stitch on the front, second stitch on the back, and then it becomes a little bit more apparent because if you went through the bump only on the chain, then they just look like normal stitches. So I'm gonna find my V, a uh, second V and go under both. And now I have two stitches and I'm going to work a single crochet. And so that's how you'll work the whole way across. I just like to take this slow and steady. Um, and if this is too difficult, definitely sewing is probably a little bit easier. It's just not my preferred method, but 
what I like to do is just, again, take it slow. And then once I get to the end, I just eyeball everything to make sure that it looks like I lined it up pretty good. And luckily the headband is very, very short um, with only eight stitches in the chain. So it should be relatively easy to see if you, you know, missed one or connected the wrong two. So now what we're gonna do on the last stitch is go through the third chain of the chain three on the front and then the last chain on the back. Okay. Now our headband is connected, but now we have to finish it off. So we're going to chain one, pull that tight. We're then gonna grab our scissors, cut a tail, and then pull that through. So now the knot has been secured. And now we just have to tuck in our ends. Okay, it got really sunny there, so I had to shut my blind so the view looks a little bit different, but we're gonna go ahead and tuck these ends in. So since they ended up on the same side, and I'm pretty sure that will happen for you as well, I'm going to just tie them in a knot to further secure it. And I will note as well that by doing the single crochets, it definitely leaves a noticeable seam line um, so whenever I'm giving it to someone or putting it, you know, in a present, I'll definitely flip it the way where the seam isn't showing. And then it's almost like you can't even tell where it is, but just a little note. And then I'm going to take one of my tails and thread it into my darning needle. And then just work it through some of the single crochets. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going anywhere since we tied it in a knot. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut that end. Sorry, I held the scissors in the weirdest way. Um, and then just repeat that on the other side. All right, and there you have it. That is the completed headband. It's super cute, easy to make. It's great if you need to pump out a ton of projects all at once, but it's still thoughtful because it is handmade. So let's move on to the infinity scarf. To make the infinity scarf, we're going to place a slip stitch or slip knot onto our hook and chain 14. We're then going to chain two more for our first double crochet and work lemon peel stitch the entire way across. Again, this is just alternating double crochets and single crochets. Okay, so now you've completed your first row of lemon peel stitch. 
And to complete the scarf, you're going to work a further 92 rows for a total of 93 rows. If your gauge is a little different, the dimensions of the scarf are approximately 8 inches wide by 62 inches long. And the length was basically determined by how many rows I could get using just two balls of Woolies Thick and Quick with leaving enough to single crochet the two ends together, if that makes sense. We'll get into that once we work our 92 rows. But work 92 more rows and then we'll meet back to join the two ends. Okay, so I've used up two balls of Woolies Thick and Quick. My scarf is about 62 inches long and I'm good with that, so I'm not gonna grab for another ball. Um, so if you wanna create just a normal scarf with no connection to create the infinity scarf, you would just work a slip stitch, cut an end, and then create a double knot by pulling it through again. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I want to create the connection and work an infinity scarf. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you want to create the infinity scarf, make sure you've kept a little bit of working yarn. And don't cut this yarn until we're all done connecting the two ends. So what I'm going to do... This is about as wide as I can get. I'm going to take my scarf and fold it in half, making sure that it's not twisted. I don't want to twist my scarf um, when I go to connect it, otherwise it'll be twisted unless you disconnect it. So what I'm going to do is flip my yarn so my working side, or the side I just finished on, is closest towards me and the beginning of the scarf is on the other side. Right side, wrong side doesn't really matter here because it's identical with this stitch. So basically what I'm going to do now, and there's a multiple different ways you can connect these two sides. You can sew a whip stitch, mattress stitch, but I always prefer to crochet. So I'm going to just work single crochet across the edges going through both sides at one time. So I'm going to insert my hook into the working loop and I'm going to chain one. That'll just work as our turning chain for this. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch on the front and the first stitch on the back. I'm then just going to work a single crochet. And that's essentially what we're going to do across the whole way. Um, but I'm going to show you that again. So into the next stitch on the front and next stitch on the back and work a single crochet. I will say this will create kind of, you'll be able to see where these were connected, but I found that it really doesn't matter because there's so much scarf going on and it gets folded and it's really not that noticeable. But again, if you have a different way that you prefer to connect, definitely do that. So I inserted into the next stitch on the front and on the back, and I'm working a single crochet. So I'm just going to do that the whole way across until I get to the end. Okay, so I do want to show you once you get to the last stitch, you're going to have to work through the chain three on both sides. So the first one's easy, you just go through the third chain of the chain three, and I'll zoom in a little bit more. So I'm working into this chain, it's the third chain of the chain three. 
And then on the other side, you're actually going to be working into the first chain of the chain three because it's flipped, but it looks exactly the same. So if you just find where that third stitch is, so we have one, two, three, I'll just work into that. And then work our last single crochet. Okay, so now that we've made a secure connection across both sides, we're going to work one chain stitch, pull it tight, and then I'm going to grab my scissors, cut my yarn, and then pull it through the loop to create a double knot. So now we're basically done, we just have to tuck in our ends. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab my darning needle. And I'll have ends on both sides here that I'll have to tuck in. So I'm just gonna thread my needle. And you can really do this any way you'd like, but I just like working it through a few stitches. Doesn't even have to be that many, but I'll just work back and forth on the single crochets. And then once I'm satisfied, I'll just cut that tail. And then do the same thing on the other side. So as you can see, there is a bit of a noticeable seam, but I really don't think it takes away anything from the scarf. Um, and on the other side, you can barely even tell. So really, it won't be too noticeable while it's being worn, but there you have it. And then also, I'll have to tuck in um, my ends in the middle of my scarf where I connected my two balls, but you basically just do that in the same fashion as we did the ends. So that is the infinity scarf slash regular scarf if you don't connect the ends. Now let's move on to the next project. To work the lap blanket, we're going to put a slip knot onto our hooks and we're going to chain 50. So this is definitely bigger than the other two. Okay, and just like all the other ones, I'm just going to work lemon peel stitch the whole way across this chain and then we'll work a total of 54 rows. And that's including the chain that we're going to work together into this base chain. So I'm going to chain two more, that's my first double crochet, and then I'm just going to alternate single crochets and double crochets the whole way across. So the dimensions of this lap blanket are approximately 32 by 34 inches. And I'd never made a lap blanket before, so I saw a lot of varying measurements that you could use. Um, I kind of honestly winged it. I used a lot of scrap yarn that I had. And scrap yard is, scrap, scrap yard, scrap yarn is kind of probably not the right term. I just had a ton of Woolies thick and quick balls of yarn that I'd been trying to use up for a long time. And this definitely ate up a lot of it. So I will say kind of, I will say kind of like I mentioned at the lemon peel stitch part of this video, if you want to make a lap blanket and use less yarn, I would definitely recommend single crochet or double crochet. This is just kind of the stitch I started with. Um, not to say I don't love how it turned out, it turned out really really cool, it's like pretty funky um, in a good way. 
but if you want to use less yarn and maybe you want to keep it a little less heavy because the more yarn you use the heavier it'll be um, you can definitely mix it up from lemon peel stitch but I'm gonna go ahead and work along the rest of this chain and then we'll meet back Okay, I completed my chain in the first row and now I'm going to work 53 more rows for a total of 54 rows. And then once we end, all we're going to do is just cut our tail and secure our piece. Um, and I'll show you that once I get to the end. Okay, as mentioned, I used a ton of different colors in this blanket and it turned out so funky and fun and I love it and I love all the colors together. Um, but all to say, the base is all the same. I used lemon peel stitch the entire way. Um, it's super textural, I love it. I think it looks so good. That being said, if you would have used the blue the whole way, I think it would have looked great as well. It's definitely up to preference. And if you even wanna mix up stripes in different colors as well, I think that's a really fun option. Um, so I'm on my last single crochet and I actually already cut my piece because I finished this last night. Um, but so I'm going to work into that last chain three and work my single crochet. I'm then going, so pretend I now cut my tail snip. I'm going to chain one, pull it tight, and then just pull my tail through the loop creating a double knot. Now as you can see I have a lot of ends to tuck in where I joined in connected colors, but that's a me problem not a you problem. So I'm just going to show you how I would secure this tail. Because this is the only project in this video where you don't necessarily join the ends. On the scarf you could have cho chosen to leave that unconnected as well, but on the lap blanket I don't think you would at all. So I threaded my darning needle, and what I'm actually going to, going to do is I'm going to go back through that single crochet and pull the knot into the stitch so it's kind of hidden. And then I guess there really isn't a front and a back. I'm so used to having a front and a back. But then I'm just going to work my darning needle through a couple stitches. I might even go down a stitch just to mix up the direction of pull that might cause this tail to come out. Um, and then go down the other row as well. So I think that's secure enough. And then I'm going to grab my scissors and just cut the excess. So of course I have to tuck in all these other tails, but that is how you finish the lap blanket. Woohoo! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I would love to see any of your finished work on Instagram.